Okay, in operation one, we're cutting this tight tolerance slot. So you have a plus or minus five, but you only have plus or minus two at the back edge. Even if we probe the back edge of the vise for our origin, uh, it is only so accurate. The cutters are only so accurate. So we set up for best case scenario and ideal conditions, but then we allow us to um, make adjustments at the machine. Uh, and I would suggest, rather than adjusting the tool for this operation, I would adjust the actual offset on the machine, and then that'll dial in this back jaw of the vise uh, even more accurate than it is if you need to move it. Uh, the probing is pretty accurate. Okay, so we're going to do a 2D contour, just a simple contour, and we're going to contour the critical edge because uh, our cutter is going to be a quarter inch end mill. It's going to be pretty much nominally the width of our slot. So let's select our tool. You're going to go to the aluminum library for the VF1, and we're going to pick tool number four which is our quarter inch end mill. Okay, and then let's leave all the feeds and speeds at default. Multi-axis, there's nothing to do on that tab. We're gonna to go to geometry. We're gonna select the contour. You wanna make sure it's on the left side. Then we're gonna to go to heights. And since we went to select a contour, there's nothing to set for the depth. And on, uh, on this model, because the stock's the same size as the model itself, we can just leave all this at default and then uh, for this operation. Now, um, we're going to go to passes and we we want to go slower than, or we want to take this more ginger than we, we would on uh, a component or air feature that is uh, of a looser tolerance. So we're going to set this to wear um, compensation and then we're going to go down and we're, we are going to do a roughing pass. We're going to do one. It doesn't really matter what the rough spacing is because we're only doing one. And then we're going to do multiple depths. And we're going to do eighth inch steps, 0.125. Because we're going to go 100% engagement on this, this slot. And uh, we want to, we, we, you know, I normally would go deeper than this. But again, we don't want the cutter influencing that wall. Okay, and we are going to do one finished pass at the bottom, which is going to be, what that's going to be is a, a spring pass in reality. So we're going to go uh, 0.01 for 10 thousandths on our finishing step. We are not going to select this finish at final depth because we want a really nice, uh, accurate finish. We can use, uh, we are going to rough the final even step downs. Okay, and the islands are irrelevant, so let's just deselect that. All right, we need to go back up since the, bo the box doesn't show up till you fill out roughing steps. Our roughing step over is only going to be 1,000th. This is critical you get this at 1,000th, no more than 1,000th, because we have plus or minus 5 to work on that slot, so it can only be 5,000th bigger we're going to be intentionally cutting it 1,000th bigger. And that way we do get a finished pass on that one face. Once you've run it on the machine, it's critical you measure this in the machine. And if you, if your part is not correct, you need to make adjustments. We're going to go on to the linking tab. We're going to leave uh, these first boxes at default. We're not going to do a horizontal lead-in radius in this case. We want to, because it's a straight slot, we're going to come in off the workpiece. So set that at zero. Our sweep angle is going to be zero. But we need to increase our linear lead-in distance to over half the diameter of the cutter. So that's going to become 0.13. We don't want the perpendicular box, and we don't want the vertical lead-in. We do want to lead in lead out. We're going to hit OK. And if you zoom in here, you should see that we have two very narrow passes. And on the, on the final pass, you see this; it goes diagonally. That is turning on cutter compensation. Okay, and it will allow you to adjust it at the machine. OK, the first operation is done. All right, let's go on to the next stop.
So we're going to make the second vice instance visible, make the first one invisible, and then we're going to flip part 90, 90 degrees in the view. All right, so we have our holes pattern we're going to do. Okay, we're going to go to highlight setups. You're going to right click on setups. And we're going to hit new setup. And on stock, we're going to go from the previous operation, which is fine. So we'll just leave that alone. And then we're going to set our origin. Okay, so we're going to go to Z axis and X axis. We select the face we want normal to the Z axis. The X axis should run along this edge here. If it flips it over, flip it back. And then we're going to go to model box point. So the bottom corner here. So that our origin saves the same spot. Again, this is the time savings. No reason to reprobe everything. Your fixture should repeat identically unless, unless you have uh, moved the coordinate system on the machine or you've bumped your work stop with a, with a hammer or something. Okay. All right. We're going to go to post process tab 101, two program comment op two and work offset one. We're going to hit OK. We're going to slow click on the name, go up two. All right, so on this, we're going to do uh, tapping and drilling for a quarter, uh, for a 1032, and we're going to do the center drilling to make the countersink. So let's do that first. We're going to go to drilling, and we're going to select from the mill library, our chamfer mill, from the Sierra VF1 library, you got to switch it to milling tools available. And we're going to use the 3 8 45 degree chamfer mill. We're going to select that. We're going to leave the default settings. We're going to skip multi-axis tab, go straight to geometry. And we're going to select our features. So our features are, you're just going to select the chamfer themselves or countersinks themselves. We're going to go to heights. We should be able to leave all this at default because the stock's already machined down. And we should be able to go to the, from whole top to whole bottom on this. The next tab, we're going to do a deep drill, drilling full retract. Now, that will make do this in PEX. The reason we're doing this in PEX is really just to clear the aluminum and it also allows us to put a dwell at the end. That means that cutter will stop and stay there for a few seconds. So we want to do that so that we make sure we get a nice clean cone. And um, so our default pecking depth is, is a little deep. Let's set that at 0 0.06. So it's about 60 thousandths. That'll put its minimum pecking depth. And then we're going to, we're going to dwell just at the very end. So we're going to put in one second there. All right. So it should do about three packs, then dwell at the bottom, and then pull back up. In okay, next operation, we're going to drill with the tap drill size for the 1032. Okay, so we're going to go back to drilling. We're going to select a different tool. Okay, it's for hole making. It's going to be from the Sierra Aluminum Library. And we're going to use the tool that is right here. And if you expand the note, it says uh, for the 1032 form tap, which is what we're using. So we're going to select the 177.2, keep the default settings, skip the multi-axis tab. We're going to go to geometry. And you want to select the chamfer and the hole. That way it sets the top of the hole at the top of the part. Now, how deep do we go? The drawing doesn't tell you because it says through one wall, this hole isn't established yet. So let's pull up the drawing. Okay, so we don't have a depth on this call out. 
Okay, it just says through one wall and it needs to bust through here and have a full thread. This hole's not established yet, but we can estimate how deep we need to go. So if you look at this, the distance between this edge and this edge is the difference between 1 inch 900 and 1 inch 400. So if you subtract 1 inch 400 for 1 inch 900, it's a half of an inch. So that brings us to the center of this, this circle here. So if we go to the Heights tab, this is currently what it's going to drill from the top to the bottom of the hole. We want to break through with the tip. Our bottom height, we're going to select, instead of hole bottom, hole top. But we're going to go negative 0.5. Okay, so that gives us our half inch. Now we're tapping this, so we need to go a little bit deeper just to make sure that the tap doesn't hit the bottom of the, of the threaded hole. So we're going to go 0 0.03 deeper with our drill bit then we're going to go with our um, tap just to make sure we don't hit bottom. Our cycle is going to be a deep drilling. Again, it's because it's aluminum, not because it's that deep. Our pecking depth uh, defaults to the 0 0.0443. That's fine. Our minimum retract is, is about the same and we don't need any other parameters there. So if we zoom out Okay, next operation is to tap these holes. So we go to drilling. We're going to select from our aluminum library the 1032 form tap. Okay, we are going to then set the default settings, skip the uh, multi axis tab, go to geometry. We're going to select the top and bottom of our holes like we did before. And on the heights, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go from hole top, but instead of going to hole bottom because we don't have a physical bottom to it, we're going to go from hole top and then we're going to tell it to offset a negative half inch, which brings us to the center of the hole. And we should get a, a pretty good thread there. Okay, and then we go to the last cycle and there's nothing to set there. We hit OK. All right, we should be done with op two at this point. All right, so now let's move on to operation three. We're going to make the operation three vice visible. We're going to hide the one from op two. We're going to look at it in the view we're machining the part. Okay, we're in our last orientation here. Uh, so we're going to go to setups. We're going to right click on setups and hit new setups. Our stock from previous is fine. On our setup, again, we're going to go to uh, x-axis and z, I'm sorry, z-axis plane and x-axis. We're going to select the top of the part. For x-axis, we're going to pick an edge. Okay, make sure it's pointed to the right. And then our, um, we're going to go to model box point. And we select the left-hand corner again. So we can do all three operations using the same setup. We go to post process. We're going to call this 1013. Program comment op3. And then we're going to use work offset 1. Okay, so we're going to highlight setup 3 and we're going to say op3. Three. Okay. Three. okay. Um, what we're going to do first is we need to set up some tools. If we look at our drawing, we have these four holes. We have a loose tolerance on the quarter inch. We have plus or minus five on that. So what we're going to set up, we're going to set up a drill bit that can cut all of these and then come back with reamers to do the other two holes. So we're going to utilize this tolerance and we need to go with a tool that's smaller than our small, smallest hole, which is uh, we're allowed to have this uh, 248. Okay, So we can't use the standard quarter inch drill that was in the library. We're going to have to build it. 
Okay, so let's go and build that tool first. Okay, let's hide the drawing. Remember, we need a drill bit smaller than 248. So we're going to go to our uh, tool library, which is this icon here. And um, let's highlight the Sierra Aluminum uh, library. And let's see if there's a tool we can copy. Okay, so we have this tool, tool number nine, which is a quarter inch drill. Let's um, hit the copy icon. And then you're going to go to your document. We don't want to change the master library for this. This is a, what we would call a special tool. In documents. Okay, you're going to select in documents and then we're going to paste. Okay, so we've pasted tool nine in here and it isn't used yet. And then we need to select a tool number that hasn't been used. Okay, so these are all the tools used in our document. We're gonna edit this by picking on the edit tool. Our tool geometry here is gonna change. What we need to do is now look at a drill chart. So let's look at the stir at drill chart from our uh, tapping exercise. If you don't have it, this is uh, available on the internet. Um, I'll provide uh, copies in class if you need it. But um, this is all the standard drill bits in the in what we use here in the U.S. So we're going to start with a quarter inch. We're looking for a quarter inch on this chart, which is drill E. And we want a drill that's smaller than 248, okay, which looks like it's letter D. So we're going to plan around that. We're going to use the 246 drill. That should still be within tolerance of our plus or minus 5 on the 250. And if it isn't, we can always go back with another reamer for that one. But uh, we'll, we'll be running that, that outer pattern on the low of the tolerance on purpose. Okay, so that we don't have to put an additional tool in the machine and cut it. So we got the, okay, so that's our diameter and it's the letter D drill. So we're going to change this to first change the description. We're going to put D drill. Two hundred forty-six drill. Okay, and we don't know what the vendor is, so we're just going to leave that up to whatever. So let's take the product ID information out. Might not be current anyway. Or kind of metal. Then our cutter data is the next page. Okay, we got two flutes. Uh, material is going to be probably high-speed steel so if it's a custom drill. And our diameter is going to be 0.246. Our shaft diameter is going to match. 118 degree tip, overall length, and let's leave all these the same. Drill bits that are that close in size are going to be pretty similar. Go to shaft. Let's just assume we're using the same type of drill. Uh, actually, the upper diameter on a standard drill will be 0.25. So there's, there's no real neck to it. Holder, we'll just keep what they were using before. Under the cutter data, uh, we it should auto-select for what was recommended for that. So this looks about right. And then on our post-processor, this is critical. We need to pick a new number. So on the post-processor tab, it defaults to 9 because that's what we copied. We're going to change this to 16. Okay, so that it doesn't conflict with anything else in our program. We'll hit accept. And now we've got our tool 16, which is our 246 thousandths drill. Now we need to build a reamer. So we're going to right click on this or highlight it and hit the copy. And we're going to copy the tool. Right click again and we're going to paste the tool. And we're going to go into this other instance. And we're going to first go to the cutter tab and we're going to change the type to a reamer. Okay, and then we go back to the first tab 
and we're going to put in that this is a 0.249 and we go to cutter note to edit I might need to come back to this we're going to leave this at default we're going to shaft leave this at default holder let's just use the holder we were using we go to cutter data and here we need to adjust the feeds and speeds because it's a reamer information on our uh, reamer uh, from the handout that's associated with this assignment is that the overall length is uh, six inches four inch sticking out of the holder and we'll just leave the shoulder lengths and whatnot as is and on the cutter data we need to say change that to 0.249 okay so under shaft we're going to leave that at default under holder we're going to just leave that at what was there cutting data we're going to go and it's actually pretty close to what i calculated 2300 rpm and our inches a minute plunge rate is going to be 16 inches a minute and we can leave the retract at what it is and we're going to change this to tool 17. Now we're going to duplicate this reamer, which will make things easier because the next tool is um, only slightly bigger. So for our second pattern, if we look at our drawing, uh, we're going to be going in with a 249 reamer, which is in the middle of this tolerance. And then on this second hole, we're going to go in with a 251 and hope that we hit the low of the tolerance on that. And um, so we need to change the description to 251. Under cutter data, we need a 0.251. The rest of the geometry is the same. So under shaft, we'll leave it alone. Under holder, we'll leave it alone. Under cutting data, we're going to pretty much use the same speeds and feeds. Okay. On post processor tab, though, we need to make sure we bump this up to tool 18. And we'll hit accept. All right, so we've now made the three custom tools we need to make. They're embedded in our document, shouldn't affect our uh, main library. And double check these numbers, it should be 246, 49, and 251, tools 16, 17, and 18. And uh, that shouldn't have any conflicts provided the tools are loaded and unloaded from the machine properly. All right, so we're gonna go to close.